Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Praise be to glory to God. Amen. What a blessed day to be here today in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And the greatness of our wonderful Savior. Amen. Of all the things that he has done. Amen. And also all the things and what he is doing. Amen. You know, God is calling us to draw closer unto him drawing closer unto him through his word drawing closer unto him to the drinking of his word amen you know sometimes we can go on and throughout life that where we feel that we're not consuming enough of the lord you know the world in itself is going to consume you by the things of this world the things that are moving the world amen Especially at this time and hour. Especially in this month. I know you hear me say that a lot. But I'm telling you that the enemy as is out of work. Now I'm not here to... Um, talk about the bad news, of course. I am talking about the good news, but we do have to realize and understand that we do have an adversary that is literally after our souls. Now, I just said it, and I said a mouthful because if he can have us worrying and caring about the things of this world, you know, then that's where our mind is going to be. And then our heart will follow. And so we can sit and pull back and realize and ask, where are we at? You know, are we truly having our minds set on God? You know, the Lord spoke to us there out of the book of Deuteronomy. Or he was saying, you know what? Love the Lord thy God. Love the Lord thy God. With what? With all your heart. With all our mind. With all our soul. With all our strength. And so the question is, is that are we? Are we giving the Lord that designated time? So that he could speak to our hearts. You know, he wants to do that change. And not only does he want to, he pretty much has to. You know, because he wants us to manifest that life of Christ within our lives, separating that from darkness and that which is of the light. Now, Jesus even shares with us and tells us that he is the light. You know, I was um, going into it and I'm going to go 
go into that as well. But before I do that, you know, I really want you to grasp this importance of praying to God and seeking God and and coming to Him through His Word, you know. And really, I'm talking about His presence literally consuming us. Amen. Because I believe that that's where the Lord wants to be in our lives for us. And I believe that as we gather close more into the things of Christ, that not only it's going to be Him to us, but it longs, He longs that it be for us to Him. I mean... How many of us can literally say that, you know, we seek God earnestly every morning? You know, something is always going on that we put that egg first. Maybe we put that bean first, you know, los frijoles y los huevos, <laughs> los blanquillos. You know, we put our eggs and bacon first. You know what? We must seek the Lord. Why there is time to seek Him and to love on Him and to bless His holy name. You know, a lot of my time, I feel like I'm the woman at the well. You know, just drawing from the waters of our King. He says, when we draw from those waters that we will never thirst. We will hunger no more. You know, there's many of us that we go through force fast where, you know, we weren't planning on a fast, but it just happens. Come on now. And sometimes we have to wait. We have to wait. We just have got to wait. You know, sometimes things happen like that because we don't designate a time and say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. But we go through, like you could say, a partial, a partial, a hunger. Where you feel like, man, I'm hungry. You know, we hear it sometimes where we say, man, I could eat a horse. You know, but I'm not talking about eating a horse. But I'm talking about how our body, how it craves it, how it hungers it. You know, how it's uh, wanting something more and more and more. But you know what? It's not the more of this world. It's a hunger for Christ of thirst and righteousness that we in the flesh have to submit the things of the flesh so that the Spirit of God can, can then manifest within our lives with leaps and bounds. You know, I believe that God wants to do that water, not only that water walking miracle, but that water to wine. Because we can have lots of water, but it's until we get into the new wine, into the new spirit, the, the, the new depths of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that there's a whole nother spirit. No, 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 don't get me wrong. Don't take my words out of the context. What I'm saying is there is such a depthness of Christ into the things of God. Even Christ himself questions me. Do you know me? Do you know me? I mean, I'm talking about do you really Know me. Do you know who I am? Because if you knew me, you see what I'm saying? Then you wouldn't be worrying. Because if you knew me, you would care. If you knew me, you would love. If you knew me, you would give. If you knew me, you see what I'm saying? 
In other words, we wouldn't be at where we're at right now because we serve a God of miracles. We serve a God of blessings. We serve a God of abundance. We serve a God of the overflow. And I'm sharing with you just as well as he has abundance for everything that we may need externally. He is also the God of the internally. He is the God of the heart. He is the God of your conscious. He is the God of your subconscious. When you allow the tricks of the enemy to lie to you and to bring you down. And, and you're just going on this ferry boat of, of this ain't the love boat. Maybe the love boat to the cares of this world. But I'm talking about scripture reference where God is love. You know, Jesus, as he was spoken to those of the Pharisees. And he was explaining himself to them of who he was. And he literally, a Pharisee is someone supposedly that should even know the things of God. But as we see here, and that scriptural reverence, they didn't know. And the Lord literally told them, y'all don't know who I am. As a matter of fact, y'all can't even go where I'm going to go. They were already thinking that he was going to kill himself. No, I'm trying to let you know that you're not at the right end of the stick. Because two wrongs don't make a right. Because there's no wrong in the Lord. Now I know that we are not perfect. He is. And that's why he is the creator. And the redeemer. The Lord of our lives. He cares for us so much. He loves us so much. But he loves us even that much to discipline us. Are, are you getting the picture there now? On the disciplining. That we may have to be taken through some stuff. We may have to be given of some stuff. But you know what? And going through some things. But are we keeping the most important thing? Are we keeping at the word? Are we keeping at the knees? Are we keeping where, you know what? The spirit of God is born in me. Is it something that is flowing a continuance? Because, you know, we preach it all the time. Those that give forth testimony, hey, one day I was lost. And everybody shouts, one day. But one day, yes, I was found. And now I can see. I can see. Because I'm not just walking by in the highways and byways and being blind and being tricked and, and, and being connived by the things of this world. Nor of the things that are happening according to the world. Because those that know, they know, church. And I'm talking about there are those in the political realm that, you know what? Right now, as people, they get them off of the agenda. You know? If they could just get you off of the focus... Of the things that are happening around the world. Hey, we're going to do festival here. We're going to do festival there. You know, and hype up the stores. And, and everything's supposed to be. Oh, oh, what is that? Oh, golly, Miss Molly or Joshy Molly or something like that. I mean, if they can literally throw the wrench. And sometimes, like I shared my with it with my daughter the other day. You know, she was going through an incident and I said, you know what? 
fire just gets more refurbished. You turn more on fire when the fire gets hot. You see what I'm saying? You know, when the rubber reads the road, hey, you know what? You got to keep on burning. And that's the light that I'm talking about. The light of the consuming fire of God. That there will be a continuance in our lives. You know, sometimes uh, 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 times and, and shifts and, 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 and different situations, scenarios within our life, how it shifts, how it turns, how we're not sure, you know, when we're coming, when we're going, but we're flowing. Come on now. We're flowing. And God is saying, you know what? I don't know where this, uh, wind is blowing, but I know that my children, my children that are called by my name, when they humble themselves and they pray. You see what I'm saying? I will heal their land. When they seek my face, I will heal this land. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. You know, something just brought me to... Where Jesus changes that water to wine. And I just pray that even here today and through this radio, I mean, there is so much. There's so much that I want to share with you. There's so much, church, that I want to share with you. And I'm just going to give uh, bits and pieces and allowing really the Lord to just overwhelmed because right now it's like I'm sharing with you the woman at the well the woman at the well is God asking you questions is God wanting to know you know what where are you drawing from what is your source of life what is it that you are obtaining Who's the master over your life? Can we get that explained? Can we be open? Can we draw on God's reserves to receive out of the promise? To walk on the promise and into the promised land? Because I believe for what God has in store for you, He has that in store for you right now. It is put in you. It is placed in you. The kingdom of God is inside of you. And we live and we breathe and we walk in that kingdom. You know, God has a set up deal for you. You know, now this brings me to the, the turning the water into the wine. Because he even says, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. What is God drawing out of us? And what is that that should be flowing out of us? That even the Lord is saying, you save the very best for now. Because now is the time for the salvation of the Lord. That those that need to be here, what here. Let our eyes to be open and our ears to hear what God is saying to the church, what he has placed in you. I don't know your calling in your life, but I know that every day, every day with Jesus, it becomes to be sweeter than the day before. Yes, there may be new challenges. Yes, you might get a lot of smirks. You see what I'm saying? Hey, if I've even heard where people gotten slapped up in their face. Hello. And maybe there was a spitting kind of flying everywhere. 
But you know what? When we have something that others do not, God has prepared that table for you. And believe me, church, there's been many a times where he has even showed me, you know what? I prepared this place for you. I've even set your set your table. Even in the faces of your enemies. But he reminded me that, you know what? I've anointed your head with oil. That your cup is overflowing. Who am I talking to here today? You're feeling challenged and everywhere that you go. But that don't mean that you ain't doing nothing. No, you're doing something. You're doing something. And that's the reason why you're having a lot of confrontation. But you know what? That's okay. Because God has raised you up. He's charged you for this time. So that you may be lifted up. Because as you lift up the name of Jesus, as you lift up our Heavenly Father, as you lift up our Lord Jesus Christ, He says, you know what? I'm just going to draw all men unto thee. You know why, church? Because you're bearing the cross, because you are carrying the name. Did you not know that persecution follows Even those of the righteous. But even though that it may follow. That doesn't mean. That it condemns you. Don't allow it. God says that he will not give you more than what you can bear. Hold on to the promises of God. Check it out. Check it out. You know how like when you go to a classroom. And they're doing roll call when they call your name. Here. Here. I'm here. I'm right here. You know, I feel like I haven't gone that far. Maybe I haven't done that much, but I'm here. I'm in the line, Lord. I'm in the line. I'm in the line. I'm doing what everything that I'm supposed to be doing in the line. But the blessing's coming. The blessing's coming. And I like to confess and profess that my blessing's here. Because once again, the kingdom of God resides in each and every one of us. And the signs of the time, church, are surrounded all around us. We can be so ignited for Christ. So in tune for the things of Christ. And I still have to say on top of that. That God is not finished with you yet. I am telling you that there is so much a blessing in disguise. That it is so unmountable. Amen. And I want to share with you how, how is it that we could have such a victory there through the word of God. And I'm reading out of John chapter two. And that is where the scripture where Jesus changes the water to wine. Amen. I know I've shared various scriptures with you. But you can read the story there at John chapter 2. Amen. And the word of God reads, but you have saved the best for last. In other words, Jesus did it. He changed that water into wine. And even the master said, you know what? All of this, all this hell that you've been going through. He's saying, you know what? I saved the best for last. You're it. You're the done deal. You're the creme de la crop. You are the, you know, (laughs) God says who he's called you out to be. Because even the Lord said, you know what? I am that I am have sent you. 
So why do you disqualify yourself from the line that I have sent you, that I have ordained you, that I am the one that have placed you? Come on now. Don't line up with the line of the Pharisees. Don't line up with the line of the naysayers. Don't line up even with the line of the liars. Hello? We need the Holy Ghost. We need some repenting going on. But I'm sharing with you that God says the very last for the last for the what? For the miraculous. Because he says that signs and wonders will follow. The believers. He didn't say that we will follow them. No, the signs and wonders will follow us. Because we are those of the called to bring of the best is now. A great preacher man used to say, and the best is yet to come. And the best is yet to come. And I'm telling you, church, that right now, and the time that we're living in is the very best time. That our time has come. Hallelujah. Man, I'm feeling power. Power, 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 wonder, work, and power. I know you said, woo, I need a... Turn down my radio just a little bit because Sister Tina all up in my ear. I'm trying to share with you that now is the time. This is the perfect time that God knew you. This is the perfect time that God created you. This is the perfect time to do any and everything that God's placed and put in your heart to do. As long as you're acting upon the word, you're enforcing it. You know what? It's not your will be done. Hey, if something doesn't happen, it's not on you. Are you kidding me? You need to break that spirit of pride. That This don't have nothing to do with you. This don't even have nothing to do with me. This is about him. You know, a great preacher said it this way. It's all about him when we sing to him because now we're worshiping we're living a life of worship this ain't about the a-e-i-o-u's are you kidding me this ain't about the do re mi fa so la ti do this is the life this is the life because i want to share with you something Before I go into the next segment. He has saved the best for last until now. This was the first of his miraculous sign. Jesus before him at Cana and Galilee. He thus revealed his glory. And that's what God wants to do in this day of age. Reveal his glory. And his disciples put their faith. In him. And my question is. Where was it before? Did he not have enough. A credibility. I mean just to know already. Of him being birthed out of a virgin. Where there was. Uh, no consummation between a man and a woman of any kind of get go there. You know what I'm talking about? Just to know that he was born through the spirit should have been miracle enough to realize that this isn't any ordinary Jesus. That was to be born. He walked and he talked with them. You know, God's talking about consuming, consuming, consuming. That we are consumed from the very crown of our head 
to the very soles of our very feet. I wanted to share another words of scripture here. I want to take you now back to the book of John there in chapter 8. Where the story where he comes to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. It says that he came again to the temple and all the people came with him and he sat down and he taught them. But the scribes brought to him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery and in the very act. I, I, I love this church because <laughs> when I did the study on this, I was thinking, why would they know that? Where were they at? You see what I'm saying? Did they have their hand in the cookie jar? Did they get caught? I mean, for them to know that mess, you know, it's just like when something went down on a party and then, you know, the yakety yak is talking about it outside of the party. Well, how do you know why well, I was there? Hello? Well, what were you doing there? You see what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry. Spilled beans. <laughs> I spilled the beans. And see, they're saying that she was taken in, in this adultery in the very act. They said to him, Master, this woman was taken in it. And now Moses, now they're bringing up the past. And the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what does thou say it? So in other words, now they're questioning him. They're questioning Jesus, the King, the Savior of the world, the Redeemer of the world. Yet you want to set your life on these laws and these commandments that was all made up by man. And now you're bringing it into the Spirit. They said... Tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus, he says, stooped down and with his finger, he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. I believe that he just scooped down and he said, I don't want to bring fire from heaven just to consume these people. I'm going to love today <laughs> because I see their heart. I know what their heart is saying and their intentions that are towards me. You see the conniving part? You see how this is all kind of working together? It says... So they continued asking. And he lifted up himself and he said unto them. He just said it. He that is without sin among you. Let him cast a stone at her. And then he again he stooped down. And he wrote on the ground. I believe that. He challenged them in their heart and what was inside of their heart. And it was so challenged that even the conscious and their subconscious began to communicate to their heart. And then they which heard it, the word of God says, there in number nine, it says they began to be convicted by their own conscience. I want to share something with you today. What is burning in your conscience? What is burning in your conscience? Maybe it can be even subconscious. 
or something that you left behind and thought, you know what, that's nothing. But for some reason, you just don't feel good in your spirit. You just don't feel good in your mind. You just don't feel good in your heart, like something's burning in your conscious. But let me tell you what they did. It says, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the very last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman was there standing in the midst. The woman there was then standing there in the the mist. I'm asking you today, what is in your conscious? Because as we see word of scripture, it says when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw no one but the woman and he said even unto her, woman, where are thou accusers? Had no man condemned thee? And she in turn, she said to Jesus, she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, well, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You know, Jesus' conversation was so clear. Maybe you feel something in your conscience or some conscious that God is saying, you know what? I'm releasing you from that act of wrongness. Because if we have sin, let us sin no more. If we have acted wrongly, then let us ask God, who is faithfully and just to forgive us out of all our sins. And that's there out of the first book of John. Church, God loves you. And maybe you feel like you're, you have not been able to move forward with the calling that God has placed upon your life simply because of this bad action, this conscious, this subconscious that is not allowing you to sleep or that's not allowing you to rise up or lay in your head to rest, or you feel like something is not right. Let's make it right today. As we pray together and we come before the Lord, I want to be like the woman where the Lord then tells her, where are those accusers? Who is it? that condemn thee. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. You're a God that sees our heart as well as our mind and our soul, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you have forgiven us, that you have forgiven our sin spiritually, physically, mentally, socially, in every aspect within our lives, Lord. We rededicate our hearts, our soul, our body, and our minds. Father God, we commune in you today. And I thank you, Lord, that that of the cup, which represents the blood of Jesus, we receive it and we take it today. That of the body with the bread that which we eat, which we consume, Lord. Oh, Father God, that is of your body. We receive your blood and we receive your body here today, Lord Jesus. Father, have your way, Lord. Let us become afresh and become anew in your presence. 
let your name forever to be praised and to be lifted up. Father, from the very crown of our head to the very soles of our feet, Father, I'll call my brothers and sisters to be whole, to be healed, and to be sound. In Jesus' mighty name, in their heart, as well as in their mind, as well as in their soul, as well as in their spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we receive and we drink of your water. We receive and we eat of your bread that we will hunger and thirst no more only for that of righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, I pray and hope that this has been such a blessing into your lives. I know that usually come towards the end of the week as God permits. You know, we do a longer study and I want you to share it. Amen. I want you to share it going into this weekend. And also too, I want you to prepare a communion. Prepare a communion cup. And I want you to rededicate your life as well as your mind and every portion of your body in commune with our Savior. Amen. Just receive it. Dedicate it to the Lord. Amen. If you want to do live video with me with your communion, if you want me to pray with you, I'm more than welcome to do that. Amen. If your church does not do that, um, you're more than welcome to message me and I can help lead you toward that. Or maybe if you need a deeper understanding or acknowledgement, that is what we are here for. Amen. So God bless you knowing that we have a covenant with Christ. Amen. And our salvation and our lives with Christ, He gives us brand new starts and He makes it new every, every morning. Amen. Of every time that you just cry out to God. Amen. And it's not only in the morning. I'm not just saying that. That scripture reference about it being he, His mercies are new every morning. But every time that you cry out to God and you ask for true repentance, know that God hears your voice. Amen. He knows your voice and he loves your voice. Amen. And he loves you. Church, there's much to be done. And I pray that you will accomplish all that God has ordained and has called you not only to do, but to be. Amen. We have the victory. I want you to say that today. Amen. We have the victory. The victory is ours. The victory belongs to me. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, church, for traveling with me here through these podcasts. Amen. Share it. Like it. Be a blessing to your family, to your loved ones. Amen. Do something special this weekend for somebody. Amen. Um, just be uh, an encourager, amen, and allowing the the light of Christ to permanence and to shine within your life. So we love you, and we'll see you so very soon. God bless you, church. Amen and amen. Los poderosos se postrarán delante de ti, Santo, 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 Santo. Nadie puede estar de pie delante de tanta santidad, de tanta hermosura. Nadie puede estar de pie delante de tanta santidad, de tanta
tanta hermosura 